So what does side chain actually mean? What we're doing is essentially getting a side signal chain, a, a signal chain from somewhere else, and we're using that to trigger an effect in our project. So we've got this effect, we've put it on our track, but instead of getting the trigger from the track itself, we're getting it from a different track. And by doing that, we can create some really interesting results. So there's bookmarks in the video player for the different types of sidechain if you want to jump into that. But first I wanted to start with a bit of history of sidechain because it's actually pretty interesting. I'm reading on the Ableton website and in the 1930s it was invented by this guy called Douglas Shearer who was a film audio engineer wanting to tame syllabants. So essentially he was making a DSer and it's really interesting because DSs still work the exact same way. So it says that Shira made a compressor that was reacting to a side signal chain as opposed to the direct main trigger signal. So if you think of it like this, the name side chain actually makes a lot of sense. He wanted to remove the syllabants out of a sound. So he got his compressor and made an extra side chain. So an extra chain over here. This is like the main chain and this is like the side chain. And what he did is on this side chain, he actually went and got an EQ. He EQ'd out just the parts of the sound. So maybe just maybe just this particular frequency range somewhere in here. He EQ'd out this particular frequency range in here. And then he got the, the compressor to trigger just to these frequencies. So only when the when there's frequencies in this frequency range will, will this compressor be triggered. And therefore it'll remove any frequency buildup in this particular frequency band. So this being said, it makes a lot of sense as to why it was called a sidechain in the first place. But nowadays a sidechain is just referred to as any audio that's being routed from somewhere else that's triggering your effect. So there's actually a whole bunch of different devices that can be triggered by sidechains. We can do sidechain filtering over here with the auto filter. We can also do multiband sidechaining. The glue compressor works the same way as the regular compressor sidechain. We can also do some gate side chaining as well, which is my personal favorite. So let's do some side chain compression. This is like the most common approach. Uh, we have our kick drum here. And then our bass line, just two notes like this. But first of all, we need to get our side chain input. So I've got my compressor here. I'm gonna expand it and enable the side chain and then get the audio from the kick drum, which is the thing that we are using as the side audio signal chain. So now getting the audio from the kick drum, all I need to do is reduce the threshold. And now you can hear it starting to pump as well. So the difference between this Nice, and that is sidechain compression in a nutshell. That's literally all we're doing. We're just ducking something out of the way of something else. Before we move on, I wanted to quickly sort of encourage you to use sidechain compression on stuff that isn't just kick and bass as well. Uh, you can get so many really cool results by using sidechain compression on just anything. I, I like using it on two different synths, sidechaining synths together. Uh, and that way you're getting one synth to be like the main punchy synth and then the other synth to be like a background supporting element. I've got this uh, synth loop here. And then I've also got this chord, chord loop here as well. And I wanna see what happens when I side chain this synth loop to this chord loop. It's going to emphasize these chords here and these ones are gonna be sort of ducking in the background. So let's uh, solo them, them together. And then I'm gonna get the side chain from the chords and then just bring that down. So you can see how that really pushes the synth loop into the background. Okay, so now we have sidechain filtering. This one is a lot of fun. I've got this pad sound here. I've sort of chopped it up a little bit. Let's play it with a kick just to give a bit more context. this. By the way, if you like these analog style samples like this one here, I'll leave a link in the description to where you can get a nice free analog sample pack. And so with this pad, I've got this auto filter on here, right? And if I just pull up the side chain section and just enable the side chain, I'm going to get this from the trigger here. So we've got this, this trigger here, which is pretty much just like a kick drum. And so now I'm going to use this envelope 
to control which way the side chain is triggering the filtering to occur. So if I bring this back, then every time this trigger happens, it's actually going to uh, bring the filter back. It's gonna, it's gonna pull it down and then it's gonna come back up. So let's have a listen to this. I'm just gonna emphasize that a bit more for you. You can also do it the other way. I really like the effect it has when it sort of decreases the filter and then it comes back in. So I'm just gonna pull the resonance down and bring back the filter a bit more. So let's listen to that with the kick and our bass line should go well with this as well. So in this case, I've got this trigger sound here, which is just a kick drum and I've just programmed it to be playing on particular spots. And that is triggering this filter to pump down and to move around, which is just adding a nice amount of groove to this pad. Okay, so now for using sidechain gates, I've just pulled up this gate device on our baseline track and I'm gonna use this drum loop that I have here. It's like a break beat drum loop. I'm gonna use this drum loop as the trigger for this gate sidechain. So you could think of it like the opposite of a sidechain compressor. So uh, every time we have the trigger play, it actually opens up and lets some of this bass line through. So it's closed and then when the trigger triggers it to open, it opens up, lets some of the bass line through and then closes again. And so what happens when we do this is we're essentially extracting the rhythm of something like a drum loop here into our bass line. So let's have a go at this and see what it does. So I'm just gonna enable the sidechain and get the sidechain input from the drum loop here. So you can hear that You can hear that it's getting the rhythm from this, right? So the threshold is gonna change uh, how loud of the peak that it's gonna to react to. So let's uh, mess around with this and see what rhythms we can get. That's nice. I'm gonna bring the floor down to negative infinity so it's completely quiet until the gate opens it up. And now we've got a really nice groove by simply not doing that much. So I'm gonna enable the kick drum again as well. And then I'm also gonna turn on the kick drum side chain as well. And now we've got a bit of a groove. So I'm gonna pull up my pad as well. I also have this snare and house loop here just for the sake of completion, so. So just a quick recap on those. Sidechain compression is good for blending two elements together, so ducking one out of the way of the other. Sidechain filtering is a nice way to add some groove to your filters, so I use these ghost triggers that aren't actually playing in the, in the track. And then I used a sidechain gate on the drum loop just to add a whole bunch of groove to the actual drum loop itself. We were essentially extracting the groove from the drum loop and applying it to the bass line. So that's a really cool technique as well. I hope you've enjoyed the video today. If you have, remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, thank you so much for hanging out. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next one.